Thank you for tuning in to this Team One uh, KB Gold business presentation. What will happen over the next 40 minutes is that I will be presenting a opportunity coming fresh out of Europe uh, right now moving across different countries over here and soon to be launched globally. The company that I'm talking about is called KB Edelmetall AG and that actually stands for KB Precious Metal and it's not a new company it was founded in 1994 so it's actually a 16 year old company but the first 14 years uh, it worked just as a normal traditional financial company selling pension plans, investment things, insurance, money products, different things. Uh, two years ago they started uh, taking an interest in the gold and silver industry uh, because many of the clients were asking for a gold product and also because the gold market really started uh, to be of very very great interest. Uh, when the founders and the, uh, the management saw, uh, saw the potential in the gold market, they very fast changed lanes and, uh, and started focusing on gold. So what they went and did is they actually um, uh, got their own gold mine in Turkey and they also went and bought their own gold refinery also in Turkey in Istanbul where there's around 40-50 people employed in the production line and they also have now their own distribution channel. So what we actually have here is a company that controls everything in one hand um, which is quite unique because most refineries around the world are government controlled and, um, and certainly not uh, privately held. So we have a unique opportunity here to present to the world, to the customers uh, and also of course to the partners or the referees that uh, want to take uh, a part of this exciting uh, business opportunity. The KB Group as it looks today consists of of course uh, Turkish um, companies that own the gold mine in Turkey, the, the mining rights, also the refinery in uh, Istanbul and uh, there also, there's also a Swiss company uh, in Switzerland uh, that oversees the storage and the shipment of the gold. KB does not store the gold themselves. They actually have it stored in uh, St. Gotthard Massif. It's in a very big depot facility that is government controlled. Uh, it, it goes a few kilometers or a mile into the mountains where there's a lot of depot rooms in there. And um, those depot rooms uh, are right now being used by governments, by banks, by investors uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to, to to store um, valuables. Uh, actually also the Swiss government has their own gold reserves stored in this secure facility. And this is where the gold from the customers uh, from KB right now is stored here in Europe. But of course as the company expands around the world, uh, satellite depots uh, will of course um, be taken into uh, into use all over the world. But right now we're just starting here. It's very exciting and things are going very, very fast. Uh, everything is run out of Germany. We have uh, the headquarters in Munich uh, uh, where everything is uh, controlled from. But because of the very big growth that we are exper experiencing right now, uh, the operational side will be moved to uh, large offices in Stuttgart where customer service, operations, uh, marketing, everything will um, will take place from. So the let's say the operational side of the company is in Germany, which is very interesting because Germany is a highly regulated country here in Europe, uh, which of course is known for its uh, very strict laws. So everything coming out from Germany is very uh, strictly controlled and uh, very by the book and um, and is considered to be of course a long-term business. Before I start talking too much about gold I just want to give you a brief overview about uh, the, the, the history of money because uh, <coughs> the history of money has also to do with of course the value of gold today. Uh, the dollar has not always been around and uh, paper money has not always been around. The dollar was actually introduced in the year 1900 and since then it has lost almost 95% in value um, and it keeps on losing its value and uh, actually the way it was introduced was 
uh, in the old days, everything was traded with gold. If you wanted to buy a product or service, uh, everything was paid with gold. When they tried introducing paper money, uh, they came up with the idea of uh, making this dollar, and for every dollar they printed, uh, they would put one and a half gram of gold aside in the Federal Reserves in America. So that the people that got these dollar bills, if they l didn't have trust in the dollar because they were used to these gold coins, they could just go to the bank, give the dollar back and get one and a half gram of gold per dollar. And actually on the dollar bill it said, in gold we trust. So this is how the, the dollar was introduced in the year 1900 and and very soon and very fast uh, the general public started you know using the gold uh, sorry the, the dollar and and, um, and, got, and and got used to it and, and, and started to trust it. The problem came in 1990, uh, 1929 when Wall Street collapsed and sent U.S. out in years of depression, bankruptcies, uh, unemployment rates going crazy. And the only way that the government really saw how they could fix this problem was to produce more money. But the problem was they didn't have gold enough for producing all this money, so they changed the laws and they said, okay, now we don't have to back the dollar 100% with gold, we can just back it 30% with gold. So in that way they actually could produce 70% more money. And that's what, what they did. They started really printing a lot of money and over time uh, the country came into balance again. In 69 they changed the law so that the people could no longer bring their dollars to the bank and get their money back. Uh, sorry, their gold back, um, because now they, <laughs> the, the the governments or the people in power wanted to keep the gold for themselves. And in 1971, and President Nixon changed the laws completely and said, okay, now there is trust, and fa there's faith, there's stability in the dollar. We don't need to back it with gold anymore. So since 1971, actually, the dollar is no longer backed with anything. There's only the trust that we put in it. And um, we need that today. And also on the dollar bill today, it doesn't say in gold we trust, it says in God we trust. And the reason we, we need God right now is, of course, uh, the world situation. Many years of, you know, overspending, um, uh, real estate market going crazy, credit card industry, uh, you know, it's a big big bubble that was bound to burst at some point. And that happened that uh, September 2008 when the Lehman Brothers, the, the fourth largest bank in America collapsed and uh, was the first of many domino pieces to fall all around the world. Uh, the world uh, was shaking and we, we've seen that everywhere. Uh, uh, companies going bankrupt, bank going, banks going bankrupt, unemployment rates going up, but also whole countries starting to shiver. We saw it with Iceland, uh, where the financial structure broke down. Greece uh, almost uh, uh, had the same fate here in Europe. But not only Greece and Iceland has problems. Um, we see many countries like Italy, like Spain, like Portugal, Germany, UK, of course, US as well, um, that are owing so much money away. This is actually a, a picture of the American debt clock, a debt clock that was uh, taken in the year 2008, where you see the dollar sign on the left here. Uh, uh, there is a space for the dollar sign, but already in October 2009, there was no more space for the dollar sign because America was owing so much money away. And uh, the same with Germany here, you see uh, the German debt clock, uh, it, 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 it's just going crazy. Uh, the, the German uh, debt uh, rises or uh, gets higher with around 41 million euros per day uh, and that's staggering staggering numbers so so in essence uh, a, a country is is actually like a company uh, if you owe a lot of money away and you cannot pay your interests at some point uh, nobody will lend you any more money or give you more credit and at that point you would have to close down and that's what happens to companies and that can also happen to countries and that's what we have seen with with Iceland and now almost with Greece and the problem is if you are in a country where the financial structure breaks down uh, and, 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 and everything starts to be chaos then you in extreme cases would risk that paper money will lose its value as we have seen before in Germany just after the Second World War in, uh, in America during the Depression uh, that would mean that the money you have in your pocket or the, your pension plan or the money you have in your bank is absolutely worth nothing. And what will you then do? Uh, because if, if, if paper money is worth nothing, uh, 
what do you have uh, and, and, and what can you do? Of course, it's not the end of the world, but the, you will have very tight years, you will have a lot of pressure uh, and, um, and, and you could actually uh, be under a lot of stress because as we say governments come and go, currencies come and go. Um, actually in human history around 4,000 currencies has, uh, has, 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 um, has collapsed. 4,000 currencies. So it, it's not unlikely that one or two or three or four will collapse again. Uh, it's in our nature. It, 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 it's, 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 in, it's in the history. And that's why a lot of uh, financial experts, I mean really financial gurus uh, that have studied economy for 40, 50, 60 years, people like Mark Farber from Switzerland, who was actually the guy who foresaw the financial crisis before it hit. You have uh, P um, Peter Schiff, Warren Buffett, uh, Robert Kiyosagi even talks about uh, this uh, evil spiral that we are in in the world today. Um, and as Mark Farber said, it's, it's, it's like pu pouring water into a glass. If you keep on putting water into the glass, it will spill over. And if you keep putting it in, it will st st keep spilling over. And that's what we're seeing now. And, he, and he's, he's stating that we haven't seen the end of anything yet. Everything has just begun. We will see more bankruptcies. We will see more banks going bankrupt. We will see whole countries go bankrupt. Um, he, 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 of course, he doesn't know when and where, but it will happen. We can be sure of that. And uh, that's why he says the only way that we can really secure ourselves against a possible coming crisis is by, for example, investing in gold. And they recommend, a lot of these experts recommend that you should put at least 5 till 20% of your assets into gold. In physical gold that you can get your hands on in, in times of crisis uh, that will make you flexible and make you able to provide for your friends and family. Um, but not big gold bars like you see here on, on a, a kilo or two kilos or even 100 gram bars or even ounces. Because an ounce, that's a, around 31 grams, it's a lot of gold if, uh, if, if, if money has suddenly no value in your country. You can buy a lot with 31 grams. So what they ac actually recommend is small units uh, that will 